My name is Tony Van Veen, CEO of Dismakers. Welcome to the fourth video in Dismakers series about music copyrights and royalties. If you haven't seen the previous videos, click the link in the description below to start with the first one. I highly recommend it. Today, I'm going to be discussing mechanical royalties. If you've been watching this series, you're well aware by now of the two basic rights to a song, the sound recording and the composition or the publishing. Sound recording royalties go to the owner of the sound recording, that's the artist or the label, while mechanical royalties go to the songwriter or the publisher, and they can frequently be the main source of royalty income for a successful songwriter. So let's restate the basics. For you to collect mechanical royalties, you need to own the right to the composition of a song, aka the publishing. That means you need to be the songwriter or the publisher. In legalese, that mechanical royalty is generated by the reproduction of your music in mechanical or virtual form. In other words, whenever CDs are manufactured, downloads are purchased, or your songs are streamed on demand. So, if you are the songwriter and the artist, you get to collect both the mechanical royalty and the sound recording royalty. Cha-ching! If someone else records your song, that's called a cover song as we all know. They, as the artist, then can collect the sound recording royalty because it's their recording, and you, as the songwriter, collect the mechanical royalty because it's your composition. And here's the power of owning the composition. You collect a piece of not just this cover version done by this artist, when it's streamed or when it's sold. You collect a piece of every artist recording your song every version, every sale, every single play. If your song becomes popular enough that other artists want to record their own versions, those mechanical royalties can really add up over time. This ongoing royalty stream is why the past couple years, there's been a feeding frenzy among publishing companies buying up song rights from other publishers and from famous songwriters. Now, in a previous video, I talked about registering your copyright with the U.S. Copyright Office. But how can you make sure that the industry knows that you own the composition so that they can pay you? Well, to be honest, you could do all this yourself if you were really dedicated. And I can assure you, that's the wrong way to go. You'd have to affiliate yourself and register your songs directly with all the international collection societies and you'd need to hire a small army of translators to do so in dozens of languages. So let's forget about that, okay? So what's the alternative? Well, you sign up with a publishing administrator. A publishing administrator typically functions like a publisher, but you usually retain all your intellectual property. So you remain the right to the composition. They, in exchange for registering your songs with the societies and collecting the royalties, take a modest commission from your royalties. It's an affordable and sensible way to go if you're an independent songwriter. One, prom pr one prominent publishing administrator is SongTrust, which is used by CD Baby for their CD Baby Pro service. Other distributors may have their own publishing administration service. So here's an example of how it works. If you own your composition, and let's say you distribute your music through CD Baby's CD Baby Pro service, they, through their affiliate song trust, will make sure your composition is registered with your PRO, that's ASCAP or BMI or CSAC, as well as with all the international societies and with other entities. That will make sure that whenever there are mechanicals to be paid, those entities can find and pay your publishing administrator, and then the administrator pays you your royalties, in this case, right into your CD Baby account. How much do mechanical royalties pay? In the US, for physical CD and vinyl and download sales, the mechanical royalty is 9.1 cents per reproduced copy of that song. It could be a little more if your song is longer than five minutes. So if someone covers one of your songs, and they manufacture a thousand CDs, they owe you $91. If you're mathematically challenged, it's a thousand times 9.1 cents. Regardless of whether those CDs ever get purchased by any customers. If you sell a hundred downloads of your song, you're owed a mechanical 
of 100 times 9.1 cents, that's $9.10. Now, mechanical royalties for interactive on-demand streams through Spotify, Amazon, Apple Music, and the like are, are quite a bit murkier. And clearly, because streaming royalties are so small, they're far lower than 9.1 cents. However, what they lack in size, they can make up for in volume if your song goes viral and starts getting a lot of plays because streaming mechanicals are generated with every listen instead of every sale. So while I can't give you an easy rate calculation for the mechanical royalty rate on interactive streaming, on average, for every $10 in your sound recording royalties on Spotify, there could be an additional $1.50 or so owed to you for mechanical royalties. If you're owed $100 in sound recording royalties or you get paid $100, there's $15 in mechanical royalties that are owed to you, roughly, right? Uh, now, here's what's important. If you distribute your music through your distributor's standard distribution service, this money will never be paid to you. To get your streaming mechanicals paid, you need to have a publishing administrator, which you can get by signing up for your distributor's pub admin service. Now, interestingly enough, and I kind of touched on it, you're owed a mechanical royalty if someone else records and releases your song, but also for the sales of your music on your own albums. In the US, if you sell physical product or downloads, the distributor of the physical product or iTunes will pay you the mechanical royalty as part of the net payment for the CD or the MP3. The streaming companies will pay it directly to your publishing administrator who will then pay the royalty to you. But in many countries outside the US, mechanical royalties are set aside by the retailer or by the streaming platforms to be paid to collection societies who then distribute those royalties to the publishers and to the writers. Now you're asking, hey, I'm an ASCAP or a BMI or a CSAC member. Don't they collect mechanicals for me? And the answer is no. Performance rights organizations like ASCAP and BMI only collect performance royalties, not mechanical royalties. Yes, you need to belong to one to maximize your royalties, but you still need a publishing administrator to get those mechanicals. So how do I actually get paid? As I mentioned before, you need a publishing administrator. Easiest thing to do is when you release your music through a digital distributor, just sign up for their publishing administration service. You also need to make sure you're a member of a PRO, ASCAP, BMI, CSAC. If you use your distributor as your publishing administrator, they'll make sure your music is registered and they will collect your payments, your, your mechanical royalties, and deposit them directly into your account. Or if you don't want to do it through your distributor or your distributor doesn't offer it, you could sign up directly with an independent publishing administrator like SongTrust. There's quite a bit more nuance to collecting mechanical royalties, but this is a series about the basics of music copyrights and royalties. So this is as far as I'm gonna go. In my next video, I'll be discussing public performance royalties and the big performance rights organizations, ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC, who collect them. And how as an independent songwriter, you're probably not getting all that you deserve. See you next time.